Hello, I'm Mr. Connor. I'd like to persuade you today, hopefully, to at least consider taking National 5 Latin. Some of you will know what uh, Latin is, some of you might not. Um, put simply, it's the language of the ancient Romans. So if you have uh, an interest in Julius Caesar, Mark Antony, Augustus, any of those characters, that's the language that they would have used on a daily basis. People call it a dead language, which is slightly misleading. It's dead in the sense that it's not spoken fluently in conversation by many people anymore, but it's as alive as it ever was uh, in its written form. And that's the form that we'll be engaging with. There are no speaking assessments for National 5 Latin. So it's all just to do with what's on the page. And the language of Latin is still as rich as it was when it was first put down on paper 2,000 years ago. As a language, it's an ancestor of um, what are called the Romance languages. That's uh, French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, Romanian, and also a substantial amount of English. So the fact that you speak fluent English gives you a certain advantage in looking at Latin uh, straight away. A lot of the words um, that you read in Latin will look similar to uh, words in English and the meaning will cross over as well. Why you want to take Latin is going to be a complex question to answer. Maybe you're thinking that you already have an interest in languages. You already enjoy I don't know, French or German or one of the other languages available in school. Maybe you don't take to modern foreign languages, but you really love English. You love words. You love the origins of words, etymology. Anyone who's been in my class um, knows how fanatical I can be about the origin of words and how knowing the origin of words actually makes you more accomplished when it comes to writing and reading and speaking in English. Some of you will come to Latin because you are interested in ancient Rome. Uh, maybe you've taken a classical studies class. Maybe you want to immerse yourself a bit more in that world. Some of you may be more pragmatic. Maybe you're thinking, well, I want to go and study law or medicine or history or archaeology or English or any number of subjects at college or university um, where an understanding of Latin will give you an advantage. Those of you thinking about medicine, for hundreds of years most medical textbooks were written in Latin. So a lot of the terminology of medicine comes from Latin. So if you've got a bit of Latin it will make these new unfamiliar concepts a little bit easier to break down. The same is true of um, law and of archaeology, history. You can see immediate crossovers there. So it's an incredibly useful academic topic to have. Now I can't deny Latin also has a certain snob value. When you say to somebody that you studied Latin at high school, people will make assumptions about the quality of your high school. Now you already go to a very good high school, but people will make an assumption because for a long time Latin was only available to grammar school pupils, uh, pupils who went, went to uh, a school where you had to pass an exam to get in. So it was associated with, um, shall we say, for want of a better expression, elite education. Now that snob value doesn't really apply anymore, but many people still think of it, which is why if you put Latin, a qualification in Latin on a CV, on an application form, some people will make an assumption that you are very, very bright. The rightness and wrongness of that is by the by. It's simply a matter of fact uh, in our society. But I hope the real reason you might think about taking Latin at National 5 is because you're curious, you're interested, you want to know about things which are unusual, you are intellectually adventurous. And I would like you, if you do take this, to see Latin as an adventure, because there's so much in it that will resonate with your life. It's a remarkable subject. Now, this slide demonstrates uh, the SQA's ability to make uh, course content digestible. Um, they say that in the course you will 
gain an understanding of how language works and the ability to use language well to communicate ideas and, and information effectively. You'll develop skills in using different media effectively to support independent learning and communication. I'm not going to read the whole slide, you get the idea. Let's express this more directly. You will look at um, a selection of Latin works by at least two Roman authors. Um, Catullus wrote a lot of very intense romantic poetry. Virgil wrote the great epic poet, poem Aeneid, um, which is so important uh, to the ancient Roman world. Ovid, he wrote Metamorphoses, the stories of human beings being transformed into animals, uh, the myth of Actaeon or Callisto um, feature. We have Pliny, who was a natural historian. He was one of the first people to attempt to write what we would consider an encyclopedia. And then finally, we have Cicero, the great orator, politician, statesman and philosopher. So we will take a handful of selections from some of these writers and we will spend time translating them, getting to know them so that in the exam you can answer questions on them. The other thing that you will learn to do is to translate texts in Latin, which you've not seen before. We'll come to that. At the end of the year, you will have an exam and you will get um, 60 marks for questions on the literature, which I've just mentioned, and 40 marks for translating a passage of Latin. That's it. The answers to the questions on, for example, the poems of Catullus, all your answers will be written in English. You might need to quote a Latin phrase here and there, but you are not expected at any point in this course to compose in Latin, to come up with fresh expression, to write down your ideas in Latin. You'll be required to understand what the words mean. So, for example, there might be a question, maybe we've read the, the story of Icarus. Um, and there is a question, what evidence is there in this passage that Daedalus was very skilled? In which case, your answer written in English would be, the passage says that he carefully carved the statue. So in this particular example, no Latin is required. You just need to know the text. The translation paper, the second paper, um, you do have to kind of sit down and get to grips with a text which uh, you've never seen before. But a huge amount of the course is preparing you for that task. The passage of text that you will get in the exam will be um, no more than one side of A4, double spaced. Um, a word list will be provided so that you're not in there completely, you know, dependent on your memory for Latin. For example, there's a sentence here, Olim in Graecia habet tabat puella. Well, in the word list for the exam, the following words from that sentence were in the word list. Olim, Graecia, habet tabat puella. So four of the five words in the passage were in the word list. You get a substantial chunk of help for translation. Latin uh, at National 5, you will get all the basics. You'll get a deep understanding of um, the language. So it's not just a matter of knowing the poems well. When at the end of the course, you will know how to translate texts from Latin into English. You don't need to have studied any languages previously. I will provide you with all of the grammatical knowledge that needs to go alongside it. You will learn a lot about English grammar in the process. So I'm not going to ask you to identify an infinitive in Latin before I've told you what an infinitive is in English. So across the board, you're kind of getting a two for one here. You learn Latin, of course, but you also become much, much more expert in English grammar. Latin is not widely available in Scottish state schools. It's a terrific shame because it's so satisfying. When you get to the end of a passage of translation, the sense of achievement 
is so great. It's one of the great pleasures, um, certainly of my life. The course itself is very manageable. It's not onerous, it's not overbearing. And what you learn in Latin will last you the rest of your life. It's almost a cliche, the number of people who studied Latin at high school and into their old age, they still know amo, amas, amat, amamas, amatis, amant. Now, I'm not going to be doing that kind of uh, drilling of verbs, but the resonance is the understanding of words, understanding the component parts of words um, that will last you all your life. That's a pretty good deal for a National 5 course, I think. So, spero te virere. I hope 